So let's figure out how the density of the universe changes with the scale factor. Imagine right now we just draw a part of the universe as a box. And this box has length a0, the current scale factor. And in this box is some atoms, some mass. And we'll just put one in it to make it nice and simple. Now let's look back in time when the universe is smaller. So the box is smaller, and inside the box, there's still that single atom, in this case. But the scale factor of the universe is A1. Now, if I want to figure out how the density back in the past compared to the density now evolves, I just measure the density, for example, back in the past, and that's equal to the mass in the box, divided by the volume of the box, which is the scale factor cubed, because it's a cube with length a1. Right now, well, the mass is the same in the box, so m is the same, but the volume of the box is a little different. It's a0 cubed. So that means that the density goes as a0 over a1 cubed. In other words, the density of the universe evolves as inversely with the cube of the scale factor. Now, remembering that the scale factor is equal to 1 over 1 plus z, or I should say that the how the scale factor changes goes as 1 over 1 plus z, then we can rewrite this. And we can see that if I make a substitution for 1 over 1 plus z, that this whole thing becomes 1 plus z1 1 over 1 plus z0 cubed. Now, right now, the redshift is 0. So the density of the universe is going to go as the cube of the redshift, where I've made redshift just equal to the redshift back at time 1. So the density of the universe goes as the cube of the redshift. Now, to figure out what the density is over time, we need to, of course, know what it is right now. So let's just look around the universe. And from our position, we live in a galaxy, the Milky Way. And if we draw a circle around us, um, for example, let's just do a two megaparsec circle. So. 2 megaparsecs in radius, what do we see? Well, we see a bunch of little tiny galaxies that don't add up to much. And we see one big galaxy, the Andromeda spiral, which is even a little bigger than our own Milky Way. In total, within that 2 megaparsec radius, there's 1 times 10 to the 11 solar masses of atoms. So we can calculate the density of the universe, in our, at least our own little neighborhood of the universe, by taking the mass in the box, 1 times 10 to the 11 solar masses, and dividing it by the volume of the box, which is 4 thirds pi times the radius, 2 megaparsecs cubed. Now, those are not particularly useful units. So let's convert into uh, MKS. So we get rho naught is equal to 1 times 10 to the 11 solar masses. And there are 2 times 10 to the 30 kilograms per solar mass. So that's the top part of the equation. The bottom part, we have 4 thirds pi. And we have 2 megaparsecs. And a megaparsec, there are 3.09 times 10 to the 22 meters per megaparsec. That whole thing is cubed. And so in our little local part of the universe, there's 2 times 10 to the 41 kilograms. And then that is all in a volume where we have 4 thirds pi times 2 times 
3.09 times 10 to the 22 meters per megaparsec. So the megaparsecs cancel. That whole thing is cubed. So this gives us, then, for the calculation of the density, 2 times 10 to the 41 kilograms in the top and a volume of 9.9 .9 times 10 to the 68 meters cubed. And that gives us a total density in our part of the universe of 2 times 10 to the minus 28 kilograms per meter cubed. So that's not much stuff, considering how dense things are here on Earth. So that is an estimate of the density in atoms in our neighborhood of the universe. If you go through and average things over the entire universe and do your best job counting, you find that the real number is about 5 times 10 to the minus 28 kilograms per meter cubed.